Welcome to Simi Valley. I am not Bob. <laughs> Welcome to the gathering place. Um, how do you guys? How many of you guys want to do something different? Okay, that was three of you. How about the rest of you? <laughs> One of the things I know that um, that uh, God continually does is that He never does anything the same twice. True. Okay, so let's all stand up. <clears throat> What I want to do is I want to capitalize on what the worship team begin to bring into this atmosphere, and I want to continue in that. And I'm going to tell you why and the reason in a minute. Is that okay? Can we do that? You said you want to do something different, right? All right. So what I, I would encourage you to do, because what I want to do is cultivate this atmosphere. We're going to evangelize the atmosphere right now. And um, I want you to feel free to move about, and I want to change it up a little bit, because hear me very carefully. God never duplicates. He multiplies. We don't need to duplicate the same thing we did last week. We need to multiply in the abundance of what God is. Does that make sense? So I just want you guys to begin to pray in the Spirit.
Everybody just lift your hands. Come on. It's right where you're at. Just lift your hands. So, Father, we thank you for the power of who you are amongst your people. We thank you for the effervescence of your presence. For we stand here in the awe of you. We recognize that you're a holy God. We stand here to bring heaven to earth. We give you thanks. Just thank you. Thank you, Father. All right. Go ahead and find your seats. One of the reasons I did that, and I'm going to expand that. Did you guys enjoy that? You always want to teach from the presence, not outside of it, trying to convince the people that there's a presence. Does that make sense? So uh, one of the things that you understand about the kingdom, I'll just kind of bring some things out here quickly. One of the things about the kingdom, the kingdom is not something you learn, it's something you consume. If Jesus said, I'm the bread of life, then we have to consume it. It's not something you learn. And authority, <clears throat> when you move in the things of God, because there's things that you realize that when you consume of him, he's asking you to really reconcile the fullness of who he is to the core of who you are. Just pause for a second. So what happens is, Authority is earned when revelation is totally reconciled to the core of who you are. I'll say that again, because a lot of people can move in power. There's not a lot of people that have equivalence to power and authority. There's, those are two different realms. You can have the gift of a power gift and heal somebody, but you don't have the authority to deliver somebody. Does that make sense? And so authority is earned when revelation is reconciled all the way to your core. Because when, if Jesus is at the core of you, then you own the authority of who he is. You're not fighting with something else at your core. That's a whole other teaching. I'm just kind of, this is my intro, okay? <laughs> this is just my intro. But one of the things that I begin to realize about um, the movement of what's happening, because what caught me was when Bob said, Bob said something on the way out here on um, Wednesday night, and that was the value of, um, he said this, I want, I'm seeking for the glory of God. He wants the glory to come. How many want the glory to come? You guys okay with that? So when you, when you get into that value of, the, of the, the glory of God, you know, we've always said this for years, because I actually believe there's going to be a move of God that's going to be unprecedented. There's no way to measure it, because the presence is unmeasurable. So let me just back that up and just so we have a little bit, so I'm not just feel like I'm shooting shotgun shells from my hip and just putting everybody on blast, just throwing a bunch of revelation out there. But I mentioned on Wednesday, and Dr. Randy McLean, I learned this from him years ago, he's one of the few men on the earth that actually, he understands what the glory is. He's actually moved in it and was um, under the toolage of some people, and he himself is very powerful, and I'm forever thankful for some of the things I gleaned, and well, I'm going to share what, with you what I learned from him and some other things that God's been revealing to me. But um, the glory of God is, you know, we always, sing, we always say the Lord's Prayer at the end, for thine is the... And uh, and uh, for how long? Okay, so watch the, the, the what, what's what's he doing there? What's what's Jesus trying to get in the psyche of the disciples? That's you know, it's not the when we say it's the Lord's prayer, it makes me laugh because that's not really for the Lord. The Lord that is not the Lord's prayer, right? That's the disciples' prayer because he's talking about sin and all that stuff, and Jesus didn't have sin, so that's not that's not the Lord's prayer there. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anyway, moving along, <laughs> got that established. For thine is the kingdom, right? What follows out of the kingdom comes what? Power. And then it transitions into? And then it moves you into? There you go. So the end goal here is the eternal realm. And since we are ambassadors of the eternal realm, then we need to understand the power of what he's saying. For thine is the kingdom. You have to establish yourself in the kingdom. 
Out of the kingdom comes power. From power, it will usher you into glory. From glory, we enter into the forever. What's so crazy about that, people, is this is when you start drilling. Can I go a little deeper with you? You guys okay so far? This is all Bob's fault, okay? (laughs) Because it's what he said on the way out that captured my spirit, and I begin to realize he's asking for some stuff there that is in sequence of that very ending of the Lord's Prayer. But he's also asking forever. When you're asking for, for glory, you're asking in one position, if you're in the kingdom, your next transition is going to be into power. If you're in the, into the glory realm, your next transition is going into the forever. So faith, I said on Wednesday, is measurable. You can measure faith. You can have little faith, great faith, you know, really just super mustard seed faith. Measurable. The anointing is measurable. You can have a light anointing, you can have a deep anointing, you can have uh, unmeasurable anointing. Jesus had an anointing without measure. That means it means it implies that it's measurable. But the presence of God isn't. You can't measure that. Because you're dealing with a person who actually believes he's God, he really believes he is God, and he really believes he's going to live forever. There's no way to measure forever. And please hear me on this. The reason I did what we did right there is because I wanted to bring in the presence of God in the totality. We were moving into that direction, and I never want to have that come pull back just because we got to meet a dialogue in time. I'd rather pursue the things in the eternal realm so the time gets vanished away from anything that's hindering somebody. Now, what I mean by that is time is eternity's child. So if time is eternity's child, the time can't tell eternity what to do, but eternity can tell time what to do. I mean, Joshua figured it out, right? He just said, let's hold down the fort here. We're going to need some light turned on for a little bit longer, so we'll just quit tilting the earth and we'll keep the lights on. So somebody in a fallen state understood something, could actually keep the light on, right? And so what is he doing? He's actually tapping into the realm of eternity and then time submitted to what he needed to be done. So far, so good? You guys okay? All right. So what happens is, is that when you begin to feel this value of his presence, the anointing, when somebody is anointed, have you ever been to a service where somebody's really, they have a healing anointing. They're known as the healing anointing, right? And so you go to that person because they work from the anointing. Listen to the words, they work from it. They, they have to go, and everybody has to come to them. He has to work to get to them. He's got to lay his hands on them. He's got to speak something to them. In the presence, the present works for you. You don't have to work. How do I know that? Because the presence of God covered the children of Israel. He was not working an anointing to them. They were under the anointing of him, the presence of him. So everything under him, to bring out the point was, everything that's in the presence of God has life in it. If death is present, even if your clothes are deteriorating, then you have to understand something. Your clothes are going to last forever. Does that make sense? Your shoes will last forever. No one will be feeble So when you ask for the glory of God, you're asking for some things. You're asking because I believe, this is not a fully formed revelation to me, I just got it because Bob said it, but I believe that the anointing will transition you, you will work from the anointing into the presence. In the presence, the presence will work for you because it's him. If the presence is in the building, then you are not required to be anointed because he's already here. He will, he, will, he will eradicate everything that's not of him out. It's just it's going to go. It's just going to be blasted out. So when Bob said, well, I'm looking for the glory of God, and we're going to pray the glory of God in, you're asking for some stuff. Because when he said, I want the doors to be open, then you're beginning to realize that there is a, there is a he said, I want the doors to open, I want you know, to go out, but when you come into this place, it should be filled with the glory of God. Well, if that's true, I mean, if that's what you're asking for, then you cannot drive yourself to find an anointed person. You drive yourself to the anointed one. (laughs) 
And from that, life begins to flow out, the presence of God. So <clears throat> from the presence is life-giving. Presence is an environment. It is, the, uh, it is him. He is, is that. He is that. And so when he is that, then you begin to realize everything flows from that. And by the way, hear me on this, you cannot put structure to who he is. What revivals do is it messes up the structure of what man wanted to do to put God and how they knew him, and revival comes in and ruins the structure because you can't contain the presence of God because there's no way to put a structure around it. So you have to give yourself permission that it's not going to be business as usual. That little thing I just said to get up and let's move around the church, let's do it. See, that's different. Everybody's going, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. We're not used to doing that, but okay. That, that you should just, bam, it, it, you just got to move. Because when God comes in, he's going to move, he's going to mess up structure. That's the hardest thing to get into people is they, well, it didn't come through the pastor. Forget the pastor. Forget the evangelist. If God's coming in, it's all about God. It's not about the fivefold ministry. It's about him. The children of Israel camped under the presence of God. They did not camp under a sermon. So when you begin to understand that, you're realizing at the end of the day, we should be under the stewardship of his presence. Does that make sense? By the way, here's what's really crazy. You guys enjoying this? Yeah. I mentioned it earlier. God never duplicates. He multiplies. Just think about that for a minute. He never duplicates. So why do we go to every church and they all look the same? Ouch. I didn't say that. Oh, Lord, have mercy. If you notice something about um, what God did in, 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 the, in, the, in the value of what Jesus did, let's just think about this for a minute. When he brought the bread, you know, he says, you know, what, what, everybody's hungry here. What's going on? What do you guys got? Well, we got some bread here. Got some fish. But see, he doesn't duplicate the bread. It says he multiplied it. Okay. In, in multiplication, he, he broke it first, and then it began to, it says right there in Scripture, and it began to multiply. It didn't duplicate, it multiplied. So you'll find out that the, 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 the rolling of, if I can say it, or the character of God is to multiply things. Not duplicate, but to multiply. That's why the miracles never look the same. They don't duplicate. Now here's what's crazy. I'll take one statement back now, now that I got that laid out. When God made this universe, earth, all of this, you could probably find that nothing is the same. Didn't duplicate anything. Every planet looks different. Every orbit's different. Everything is different. It's all different. The one thing that he did duplicate, one thing. He duplicated himself in the form of you. Woo, that is some stuff right there. He says, I'm going to make somebody in my likeness, in my image, I'm going to duplicate myself and put them in this thing called earth, which then gives you immediate access to the value of what that means is that you have the privilege to multiply things around you, not duplicate them. Okay, so, so, so just think about that for a minute. <clears throat> Where are you at right now that you need something multiplied? What sphere are you in? So when you begin to think about this, you've got to go, okay, from this value of his presence and the privilege to be duplicated, say, I am, I am. A, duplicate a duplicate of God. God. Say this, I am, I am. Free, free to multiply, multiply. Everything, around me. everything around me. Now, that works both ways, by the way. If you start whining and complaining, guess what's going to multiply around you? Whining and complaining. If you start groaning about certain things, guess what's going to happen? Everything's going to start groaning with you. Why is it this way? How come? What for? Why did God allow that to happen? If he loved me so much, how come that happened? Da, 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 da. All that stuff comes in there. But see, what you have to realize is, is that when you're in the core of, of, the, of the duplication of who he is, you are as he is. John, 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. Is that right? 
If we are that way, then, then we don't really... Ooh, I'm going to say something. This, is going to probably, this might be my last time here. <laughs> there are no needs in God. So why are we praying to have our needs met? Now hear me right. In the beginning, when you are first a child, they're needy. I don't know if you've noticed that. For those that have raised kids, they are needy. I'm talking to those at the end of the day, when you mature into the fullness of who you're supposed to become, there are no needs. How do I know that? Because your reference is heaven. Is there any needs there? There's no needs there. So when you, when you begin to do stuff like that, and please hear me on this. I'm going to take it just a little bit further. Can I just take one more step in it? Yes. Can I have one more yes? yes. I guess I have my yes cup full, and then I'll, I'll tell you. <sighs> Let me just be practical with you for a moment. One of the things I realized is that, you know, when God made the original duplication of himself in the name of the form of Adam, God spoke to Adam, and he said, you know, this, this whole tree thing, and again, I'm going to reiterate that, everything in destiny is always based on what you eat. The original intent was you can eat from anything. Listen to the words, eat. He didn't say listen to sermons. He didn't say learn. He said what you eat. And that's why you see it, a common th- theme through the whole Bible, even when Jesus shows up, you need to do what? Eat and drink. Eat of me, drink of me, the meat of the kingdom. It's all based on what you consume is what you become. It's not what you learn. If you're learning about the kingdom, you haven't figured it out yet. If you consume the kingdom, you'll become it. Destiny is always based on what you consume. (laughs) Because the minute Adam ate of the wrong tree... Destiny was changed. It's really good. It's really good. So what the enemy does is he comes to you in a word form to eat something that's called a lie. Oh, man, I'm just hearing all kinds of stuff right now. I could really go, man. I could really go. Okay, I'm just going to go on a little bunny trail just for a minute. Just... Here we go. I need a little, little rabbit up here. I'm going, that's, that'll just be my thing. I'll just bounce it across. We're going on a bunny trail right now. One of the things you realize, and I've spoken this here before, but one of the things that you realize is that when you become word, okay, word, Jesus was the, okay. So when you consume the word, you become the definition of that word. It's really good. Here's the kicker of it. The definition of Jesus is, one of them is, everlasting. Words do not change. Words are forever when they come from God. A disease is a time-based element. It runs its course and then it dies. If you're eternal, how can a disease attach itself to you? See, when you, when you start really bringing it, because he's, he's saying from the original intent, everything was based on what you consume. We have a lot of times, we, when we get trying to be redefined, somebody will tell you, you've been, let's say you've been diagnosed with arthritis, okay? What's the first thing we should do is, no, I've been consumed by the definition of the everlasting. But most of us will go to Google and Google, what is arthritis, how bad will it be, what's, what's, my, what's my course, And, you know, what do I need to do to prolong this and keep it off of me? Because here's what happens. When God spoke to Adam, right, the serpent came into the garden and Adam never spoke. He did not. The woman did, but Adam did not. So what happens is you will lose the presence of God and a few other things when a lie is present and you're silent against it. I'll say it again. This is a deal right here. When a lie comes and it's present, when it's, and you are silent, you are going to lose your dominion and the presence of the Lord. You have to speak against what has come against you in order to maintain the presence that you are now currently standing on. They were in the presence of the Lord. 
How do I know that? Because when they fell, they could hear it. Uh, all right. You guys enjoying the bunny trail so far? So that value of understanding when a lie is present, you better say something. Because God has his um, core, if I can say that, from his core, he always says something if he wants to see something. Satan says the same thing. If he wants to produce a lie, you have to say it in order to manifest what he just spoke. Uh, see, nothing happens on the earth unless a man agrees with it. Nothing. Nothing happens. Nothing happens unless somebody agrees with God and or agrees with Satan. That's the only way that they can get in here. There's only one act that God ever did outside of man, and that was to save man. He flooded the earth. He got rid of the evil. Nobody got to vote on that one. He just did it. He chose eight people and said, we're going to do that. And by the way, I'll just reiterate, if you were not here Wednesday, who was not here on Wednesday? Okay, well, we all went to heaven. Sorry you didn't get go with us. But anyway... <laughs> One of the things I said on Wednesday is, you know, when you begin to understand what Noah's whole point of what he was doing is that he was a transaction agent to move from what was. So he built an ark. That makes him, he's a transaction. He's a transitory. He's building an ark. He's making, a trans, he's making this transition ark to get into the new place. Where we are right now is we are actually floating in the ark of righteousness through the flood of what's come on this earth. There's a new move of God coming, and we are floating through the flood of what the lie is saying. What I mean by that, is it Genesis 11? Is that what it is? I think it is. Genesis 11, where it talks about the Tower of Babel. It says they all became of one language and one speech. The language right now is COVID. The speech is fear and death. The world is now more unified than it ever has been. It has. It is. The church couldn't do it, but man, the disease. But see, it's taken a principle that we should have covered as the glory covers the earth. It grabbed it and put fear on it and then peddled it around the earth. It's quite a bunny trail, isn't it? So when you get under the value of what's happening here, you're beginning to see that God actually really wants, there's a, there is a mimicking that Satan is doing right now. He's trying to cover the, the, the glory of death around the earth when we should be covering with the glory of God. The value, tell, what that tells me is if he's got something that he's so afraid of that he has to imitate it in the opposite, that means that which is to come is right at the threshold to enter into the value of what God is about ready to do. That's what it tells me. Anytime there's a contradiction to the word of God and it's coming down in a fury against you, that tells me that the power of what God's about ready to do is right at the threshold. He's looking for somebody to take the transition of where you are to take it into the new reality rather than just looking at what Satan's doing. Listen, we have taught so long in many of the churches about the original sin. We never talk about the original potential. I'm here to tell you about the original potential. I could care less about the sin because God actually has already dealt with it. That's not my deal. My deal is to bring the righteousness of the kingdom to this earth and establish the reality of what heaven is to look like on earth. By the way, Jesus is not coming until earth looks like heaven. That's the only way when a king moves into a territory that's been conquered, when it looks like the territory from where he's from, from the motherland, that's when the king comes. So, good bunny trail. I'm going to sell a... I'm going to sell a book called The Bunny Trail Book by Dr. Barry Linhart. Here's what happens in the maturity of what's happening or what's going to happen in this move of God. I'm still on the presence. You guys still enjoying this? Yes. All right. <sighs> Oof. This is just... The problem with coming here, there's already, see, you don't have to, the problem coming here is that it's, it's so uh, active in the atmosphere, so you, you pick up on a lot of things. That comes from you, by the way, by activating the realm of the spirit, of the kingdom, and obviously, Bob, revelatory teaching, righteousness, it's easy for God to habitate here. So what's in the pool of the mind of him is what you're pulling from at any given moment. So I'm hearing things, 
because of the prayers of what you've prayed through, the spirit realm is going to answer some things that you are pulling on to get a reality to, a manifestation. Because revelation has to be reconciled to your core. Say, I'm going to, re- I'm going to hit that button again. Revelation, when it's, res- re- when it's reconciled clear to your core, you have an inner standing now, not an understanding. An inner standing. It means it's all the way to the core of you. You never question it. You, it's like COVID's coming up. You don't go, oh my gosh, do I need a, what do I need to wear? It's, that thought's not even there. See, you, you, you realize that you have a divine mind when it's absent of the fall. A divine mind, somebody that's been reconciled all the way back to new, has no reference to the fall. I'm just going to put my hands in my pocket here and just <laughs> think about that for a minute. So see, what happens is when your thought comes, check it. Okay, check the thought. What pops into your head when something comes contradictory to the word? Do you just stand there in silence and go on and start pondering with something that's unrighteous? Or do you bring up the manual of the righteousness of who you are and then just begin to talk? Because if you're silent, because Adam was, in the presence of a lie, he took away the domain of Adam. He took away his domain and his dominion. You know what happens when that happens? He got kicked out from the presence of God. See, the presence can't rest on those that are, are, are having friendship with lies. Do you see that? Still got my hands in my pocket. I'm just going to stand here for a minute. I know there's some things I say you just need to think about it. But see, God didn't reconcile us to heaven. Are you telling me I'm not going to live forever in heaven? (laughs) That's the spirit of Bob right there. (laughs) God reconciled us back to the original intent. That's what he did. One of the things I was talking about last night was, you know, it's... If you understand kingdom protocol, when you understand kingdom protocol, you cannot live in heaven forever. That's illegal. Do you guys know that? Okay, I'll tell you why. Would you like to know? You would? (laughs) So good. Bunny trail land today. Forget the notes. Here we go down the bunny trail. The bunny trail is this. In order to be a king... Say this, I'm a duplicate of God, so that makes me a king. Okay. In order to be a king, you have to have territory. If he's king there, then you can't be king there, because you don't have territory there. Thank you, Dr. B., for being so profoundly simple. (laughs) That's why you have to come back here because the original intent was I had to put a king in a territory that he could rule in the seen realm. I rule the unseen realm. You can't stay here with me because if you stay with me, you're not a king, you're an exiled king because you don't have a territory. See, it's a kingdom protocol. You have to understand kingdom protocol. <laughs> Might be my last day here, people. You guys all right? You want a real simple thing? It's just like I was um, out last night and I said to the king, when we, the food came, I said to the king. In kingdom protocol, you do not bless the food or thank it. When you're at a king's table, you say to the king. Because you're honoring what the king has provided for you. If you're trying to bless something beyond what he's honored to you, you're dishonoring him by saying, I need this blessed also. So you can simply say, to the king. That is gratitude at the highest level in the kingdom. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with blessing food. Please hear me right. But I realize in kingdom protocol, you're recognizing this came from the king, so you just say, to the king. Because it's already blessed, because he's already given it to you from the blessing of who he is. To the king. 
Yeah, I remember Thanksgiving sometimes all the religious people. I about bought a gun and shot every year at Thanksgiving. You pray beyond, beyond 30 seconds, your life is over <laughs> because I'm hungry. I remember one time somebody prayed for like five minutes and they said, they said, I'm doing it just to make sure that you understand gratitude towards Jesus. And I'm thinking, I think you're satanic. How about that? <laughs> That's why we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in. That's exactly right. So the presence, the presence. Let's go back there. Can we go there for a second? So when you're asking for the presence of God, you're asking for change. It requires, um, change requires maturity and the ability to flow into this new reality. When I said, like I said, you get up and you get up and move from that chair, that's hard to do. Uh, we haven't done that before. We're just gonna... That's weird. I mean, I, I do places, I, go, I do that just to, to, to mess them up. Because what they're doing, they're duplicating the same thing they did last week. They sit in the chair, they listen, and they walk out. Do the same thing, do it again. Well, what, if we didn't, what if we never sat down? What about that? What if God began to multiply the value of who he was in that room because you're looking and moving in a different way, and he's going, they're signaling me they want something to change. You see that? And so when you begin to multiply... Um, Get in, into the movement, you're asking for multiplicity of what's going to go, what's, what's going to happen. So, by the way, here's something I'll just give you as a takeaway today. Would you like a takeaway? Not that you haven't had one already. When you're in the presence of God, you rest. That's one of the signatures that you're actually in the presence. There's rest there. Does that make sense? One of the things that you find out is that when the presence is manifesting or it's, 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 it's in a habitation, it's in an environment, that's what it is. Presence is an environment. It's not on a person. It's an environment. It's an environment. The life of who he is is in that environment. Nothing that is dying can actually stay in that environment. Does that make sense? That's why even when clothes, you begin to understand now that even though they're not, I'm going to say another strong thing. It might be, maybe I'll be only here for two more seconds. Somebody will drag me out. You really don't have the right to say I live in a fallen world and have to live by the effect of what you're, where you're living. How do I know that? Because the children of Israel were not saved. They didn't have a new nature. They were in a fallen world. But the presence of God protected them from everything that was in that world that they were in because they were more under his world than the one that they were actually standing in. It means that the presence of God, you talk to me about your fallen world, I go, I don't know what that is. I only live in his. Oh, man, come on now. Because, see, they were neat. how much more is it to you that you have the nature of him, you have access to the life of him, would you not also have the access to the presence of him? Are you actually affected by where you are? It actually changes the nature of him? No. You don't have the ability. You don't have, in the, in the kingdom protocol, there's no such thing as, oh, I live in a fallen world. It's so hard. <laughs> Children of Israel didn't have a new nature. They camped. They walked in the presence of God. Anything that was outside of the life of God got taken out. I'm sorry, ladies, you buy one pair of shoes, that's the one you get. And it, you just get that for the next 40 because they're not going to wear out. Now, a shoe knows more about God's presence than a lot of people do. See, uh, you guys okay? See, what happens is when, if, you, if you came into a building that's filled with the presence of God, you came in discomfort or dis-ease, what does God do? He gets rid of the dis on both of them. He brings you into comfort, and he brings you into ease. That's what the presence will do. You're not coming to a person. You're coming to him. Okay. I, I'm, going to use, I'm actually going to use the Bible now. 
Can we go there? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29. Oh boy. It's pretty quiet. Are you guys thinking? Remember, the kingdom is not something you learn. It's something you consume. You have to eat of this. It has to be, you have to be, it has to be assimilated into your body. Take it and consume it. I know a lot of people that are addicted to Revelation because they want understanding, but they never make an understanding. Because they don't consume it, they use it as information rather than revelation. Revelation has to be reconciled to the core, and that's how your authority is earned. That's okay, you can get the tape, listen to that a few times. Get the MP3 download. What, what, what do you say now? You don't say tape, do you? What do you say? Just get the download of the, like the, the sermon now. What do you use? Just download the sermon, listen to it, or watch it online. Okay, 1 Corinthians 1, 29 through 31, that no flesh should glory in his presence. That no what? Okay, here we go, stop. In order to get the fullness of his presence, there has to be an absence of flesh. Now, I could walk in here and not have any flesh in me, and I will get the fullness of the presence because the presence in it, it's, it's in its totality. It's, it's not going to regulate. It's not measurable. It's just it is what it is. It's the life of him. I walk in here. I have no flesh in me. I'm going to get 100% presence. Joe over here has been messing around in the flesh all week, comes walking into the 100% of the presence. He's not going to get 100% of the presence. Why? Because flesh can't, doesn't work in that. You follow that? That's why sometimes you'll watch people saying, oh my gosh, I can feel the presence, in there, and they just simply lift their hands and the presence comes, right? The next guy is over there going, yeah, God, I need you, I want you. You know what the difference is? One has flesh in them, the other one doesn't. I didn't write this. That's what the Bible says, okay? Let's just keep on reading here. Take that no flesh of glory in his presence, but of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made us unto wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorified, let him glory in the Lord. See, when you begin to understand that, when you begin to, what you, uh, let's hear this, I'm gonna, I gotta get it out while I hear it, because if I don't say it, it's just gonna go, whing, out the door it goes. When God made Adam, Adam made, he was a duplicate of God, right? We, we got that established? But see, Adam had the privilege to see in the realm that he was in and see the unseen realm also. How do I know that? Well, interesting enough that Jesus came as the what? The last Adam. Because that Adam fell, that means it takes an, an, an eternal Adam to restore him. You got that? Jesus is eternal, right? And a word fell outside of eternity, outside the presence, and he had to learn how to die. It took him 930 years to figure out how do you die. I don't have a manual on that. God didn't give me that because God can't give you a manual on how to die. Only Lucifer can do that. Oh, my word. <laughs> Come on, people. The original intent, God has no manual, no record of death of anything. Everything's in harmony. Nothing's dying. It can't. So you begin to realize, as you begin to go down that, that understanding, that the last Adam, because the first Adam that came, God created him, made him, I said, should say, he made him, he didn't create him, he made him. You understand the difference between create and made? <laughs> is it, would everybody like to be on the same page? <laughs> okay. Creative is an act where there's nothing present, and God spoke and he created the heavens and the earth, Okay. That means there's no substance there other than the word of who he was. Adam was made. He was made from what? The substance of earth. Yeah, that's, he had substance, so God made him. He didn't have to create him. He made him. Does that make sense? If, you, if you've been around Ian a little bit, he says, you know, there's creative light and created light. God is creative light. And from creativity, he created. I have about 35 sermons and the last 20 minutes here. So the last Adam had to restore the first one 
because the first one wasn't an eternal being and he fell. Therefore, the word, listen to me carefully, the everlasting word had to restore the word that stepped away from the definition of everlasting. He stepped into death, which means your ending. So to restore something that had fallen from the everlasting, it took an everlasting Adam to restore him. That's why he named himself, I'm the last Adam, the second man. It's simple. When you see it, you go, how come I didn't see that before? I get that all the time. You follow that? So when the word came, he took it even a little bit further. Because when God said to Adam, he gave him these words. Do not eat of this tree. That's a word. Do you follow that? This is really elementary, I know. But that's why when the word was broken at a tree, that God sent his word to be crucified on a tree. What's he doing? He's, taking, he's not trying to get you back to heaven. He's trying to get you back to the original intent. Because it all happened in the original intent. When he fell, he was taken from his, the presence of the Lord. Because flesh cannot be a part of the presence. <sighs> you guys okay? Can I, can I keep going? Don't tempt me. What you realize, the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness? Stop. Peace, and the definition of this is from um, one of the things I learned from Dr. Rennie is this. It is the destruction of chaos. That's what peace is. It's the destruction of chaos. So when Jesus came up and he said, peace be still, he calmed the chaotic water. He destroyed it. And so you begin to realize peace is God's destruction on chaos. That's what it is. And, and by the way, say this again. I am a duplicate of God. If he did it, so can you. Yep. Let's go to Romans 8. Let's see if this is true or not. Romans 8. <laughs> oh, Lord. Presence. You guys are asking for some stuff. That means that you cannot walk in here with the flesh if you want 100% of him. Righteousness, consciousness is going to have the fruit of the glory of God. That's, what, that's where it's going to go. That's where it is going. Thank God for people like you that understood the value of what Dr. Bob brought to the table here, and you're actually consuming it, because it's going to lead you into the kingdom, it's going to lead you into the power, then it's going to lead you into the glory, and then it's going to lead you into the forever. And so when you begin to see this process of what's happening here, identify just by the simple prayer that Jesus said to the, how do we pray, what do we do? He understood it's the kingdom. And you know what Jesus did when he rose from the dead? He had a one-track mind. That guy had a one-track mind. Because he's going to go with what he said on the Lord's Prayer. He said for 40 days after his resurrection, he taught things pertaining to the kingdom. Because he goes, you, you got to go to square one here, people. Even after the power. And please hear me on this. You're going to have some changes here. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm just going to forewarn you, okay? In a good way. Okay? The disciples had no problem with this cat named Jesus as a Jew. And he was a carpenter. And they could relate to that. That's cool. And he started doing all these miracles and signs and wonders. That's cool. Oh, that's great. Okay, he's a pretty cool guy. Man, you must be this. Nobody can do this unless you be, you know, of God. How can you do that? That's, I'm astonished at what you're doing. But they still hung with him. When he resurrected, gone. Because, see, when he came in another form after his resurrection, they had nowhere to connect with that. Because they're more congruent with where they came from than after the power of what resurrection did to him. What am I saying? When God shows up, your preconceived ideas of God might have to go out the door in order to receive the next depth of God.
that resurrection thing is kind of a big deal. And see, a lot of people are still at the cross because they see him. Let me put it to you this way. I'll just put it in a one-liner statement, okay? The first time Jesus came, he came as we are. The second time he comes, we will be as he is. So you have to get off the reference point of what you were and get into the reference point as he is. You got that? I'm giving yourself permission to change. Because Satan always tries to reinstate you from the past or where you came from. Jesus always reinstates you to where you're going. Please hear something. There is no record of sin of you in heaven. It's not there. It's not there. So quit trying to bring it up. Now, here's the power. Listen to me in its elementary form. The power of resurrection, not fully developed, looks like this. I'm saved, but I'd like to resurrect what I used to do. The power of resurrection can actually resurrect things of the former. That's how powerful it is. Does that make sense? So the record of who you are in heaven, there is no record of fallen. That's why he doesn't talk to you that way. He only talks to you as how you're known in heaven. That's how he talks to you. Okay. Romans chapter 8. To be carnally minded is what? Oh. So you have to be in the flesh. Is that what I'm hearing here? But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and what? It's what? What is peace? Give me the definition of peace. What is it? The destruction of chaos. There should be nobody coming here going, I'm out of control. It's just a hot mess. Da, 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 da. Because when you're in the presence of God, there is no chaos. In all things, you give thanks. That's what breaks the power of chaos around you. You don't give thanks for the things that are happening, but in it, you can give thanks because when you're in it, you're identifying, I have the right to peace in this. I have the right to destroy any chaos that's around me. Does that make sense? So when you begin to understand the value of what's going on there, you begin to go, hey, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's right. Because he wants you to get the fullness of him, and 100%, if you bring flesh to the table, he can't bring the fullness of himself. You guys are looking at me like I have three eyes. Why, why, why are we doing that? So, the presence. Interesting enough, I don't know if I want to open that up or not. I don't know about that. So, let me help you. Can I just help you? Remember I talked to you about the, the bread, right? Be practical with you now. So I, get, I get charged all the time. It's so up here, Barry. How do you practically do that? Da, 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 da. And I'm going, hey, that's not my job. <laughs> my job is to bring the cow. How you cut it up and butcher it, that's you. That's the teacher's job. But revelation is something that comes fresh from heaven. It's not going to give you every do it. If you really want to understand, the apostolic brings revelatory meals. That's what it does, the prophetic and the apostolic, right? The teacher actually cuts it up. The pastor comes along and says, how are you doing with your meal? We made this pastor thing way out of control, man. And, oh, it's brother so-and-so. And he said he's the pastor, and I had dinner with him. Ooh. <laughs> the place I used to go it was a big church, and it's always a really big deal when somebody come up and they go, hey, Barry. I go, hey, what's up? We had dinner with a pastor last night. Well, I had dinner with my wife. So what? To hear me right on that, there's honor in each position. But man, when you glorify it to that level, forget that, man. You are, you are transfixed on something that is temporary, not on the eternal realm. But anyway, moving along. Moving into the bread. If you want to multiply something, listen to me carefully. Why am I going on the presence? Go to the presence, go to the presence, Barry, go to the presence, go to the presence. Because it's heaven's reality. It's heaven's reality. You have to take the face value of anything that you have that has limitation and lift it to heaven's reality. 
if you have the presence of God, that is so easy to do because you are in the presence of who he is, you can take the face value of a limitation. Whatever it is, your finances, your relationships, your da-da-da, fill in the blank, it doesn't matter. But you can lift it up to heaven's reality. If you don't have heaven's reality, then where are you lifting it to? I've heard a lot of soul prayers trying to grab the reality of heaven, but all they've ever done is satisfy the soul of the cry of the soul, saying, I did that and I didn't get nothing. Well, you forgot to secure the presence of God. David said, take not thy from me. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. So you have to do something that's very powerful to understand it. You know, it's kind of like um, this, whole, this whole thing that, 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 that we're moving into, if I can say it that way. For thine is the? And the? Then the? And then the? Here's the other thing. I'm going to go off just a little bit. If you're prophetic, okay, Randy, stand up. Stand right, right there, okay? Come here, I'm going to use you too. This is, this, is, this is the scrimmage line of the ending of man. Okay, on the other side is the millennial reign. Got it? Okay. Back here, this is Enoch. This guy right here, Enoch. Okay. Enoch looks this way. He looks at him, end of time, and the returning of Jesus, right? Because it says in Jude that Enoch saw the return of the saints with Christ Jesus, all right? So Enoch's only the seventh one from Adam, right? He's not saved. Got to hit that button. He's not saved. But he does have eyes. And so when you have eyes, you can look beyond the place of time, and see what eternity is going to do when it comes into it. So he saw the return of, what am I establishing? He's the seventh dude that's been alive, seventh one from Adam, okay? He goes all the way to this point right here, saying it's over, and he got the eternal value of what Jesus was bringing to the earth. Not even saved. No new nature, but has eyes to see. You know, come closer. Now, he's you and me. 6,000 years down the street, we are on the scrimmage line. I mean, we are close. <laughs> Do you not think that the eyesight can actually go beyond this? Grab this and bring it into here. Because when this is eternal, this is eternity over here, people. What is this? Okay. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm going to tell you a mystery. There's going to be some of us that, you know, the trumpet goes off. Those that are dead, they raise first. Because those are the guys in the kingdom upstairs going to Lord, how long before we can go back? Because everybody there recognizes they're an exiled king. Do you know that? Everybody that's in heaven right now knows they're an exiled king. They want their body back. Because you're out of order when you're outside your body. Pause. <laughs> Just hold that right now. Pause. Pause. What did you just say? I said you're out of order when you're outside of your body. How do I know that? Well, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that those that are dead, they rise first. Because why? Because you're out of order and he's going to put you back in your body suit. Do you guys get that? When you're in your body suit, it makes you... Right now, the reason you're legal tender on the earth to distribute the power of the kingdom is because you have a body suit. The minute you leave it, you're out of order, and there's no way legally God can do it unless you're in your body suit. That's why you should fight to stay in it. Hello? You fight to stay in it. Fight to stay in it. I just want to go to glory. You're weak. You're telling me I'm irresponsible? I don't want to do anything for God on the earth. I'm done. I want somebody to feed me. I want somebody to clothe me. I want somebody to have a nice house. I want angels to take care of me. And he's going, you're messed up. You want, to be, you want to be an exiled king. That's what you're saying. Oh, my word. So see, when you understand the value, because the original intent, I'm going to ask you, how long would have man lived if he had never fallen? 
Okay, where? Because he's in his bodysuit and, and death couldn't take him out because he's in the presence of the Lord. He's going to live forever. If you're redeemed, what are you redeemed back to? Heaven? No. That's really good, Dr. Barry. Thank you for that powerful amen. I don't want to ever hear you again. Okay. See, this is a different mindset. God doesn't go, I can't wait to get out of myself so I can go rest. The reason the, the man of the, the gatherings was running around and looking at tombstones and why he was screaming and break chains and had demonic entities inside of him, because everywhere he would run in a cemetery, it shows the ending of everybody. See? When you're always being reminded you're going to end, you're going to end, you're going to end, it'll make you go nuts. Then you'll say, what's the point of living? So you're going to try to slash yourself. You're going to try to exit out because you can't see the clear ending. But funny enough, when the eternal one showed up, he got in his right mind. See, it takes eternity to set those that are set on death to put their mind back right. So you have to go into the eternal mindset to be in the right mind. See, it's a different level of thinking, people. I'm just here because I need money for, okay. If that's where you're at, I'm cool with that. But at the end of the day, you don't have the right to ask for that because if you're in the presence, it's already taken care of. You guys okay? Yes. Back to this again. <laughs> These guys are just looking at each other like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I didn't pull you up at the front end of the service. <laughs> Still looking at each other, dancing around. Well, anyway. Okay, so here we are at the scrimmage line. Here it is, people. Everybody, like Dr. Bob says, Hey, let's pull out the wraps for rug. Let's go. No, 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 no. That's no. You need to go beyond this line here, grab this reality. Because God's only attracted to himself. I said God's only attracted to himself. And if you're a duplicate of himself, he's coming to you. Okay, he's only attracted to himself. He's only attracted to himself. So you just need to just pipe down about yourself. It's a balance to all that. However, when you pipe down about yourself, he comes because somebody's placing a demand on the fullness of what he is, which is eternal. When the bride finally understands, I'm placing a demand to become the eternal value of who you are, then he will come. Because somebody went from this realm, sat, found it over here, and said, hey, I'm supposed to not die. What the heck? So he's brilliant enough to say, the last thing is to be conquered is death. Well, yeah, because when you get this close, I mean, Enoch proved it the seventh. I mean, this is just wild stuff. I mean, we believe some crazy stuff. Come on now. Women turning to salt. Yeah, right. Right? Donkeys are talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Axe heads are just floating on top of the water. It just floats over to the guy. Just no big deal. Fire comes out of the sky. Woo. Takes out 50 dudes, takes out cities. Oh, man, you should see it. It's really cool. We have no problem believing that. You know why that is? Because it doesn't require your faith to, to interact with it. Go, Elijah. Go, Elisha. Go, Jesus. I got a bill. I'm going to challenge you with this one. I get the extra 175 bucks. This is awesome. See how our mindset is? It's so funny. We'll go and say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see Samson, long hair. We believe he had long hair, and he picked up this jawbone of a donkey, killed a thousand men. That's Samson. <laughs> but to meet our need to make a house payment, that's a stretch. See, that's a reality check. That's a hard reality check. When you're in this, <laughs> these guys are saying, hey, get me out of here. <laughs> the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Is that correct? If the governance of God is in perfect order, then you have the right to bring that governance into this and bring government into order. If you have the value of understanding it in this order over here, when something is out of order in you, you have the right to bring the order of what's here here, you will begin to place demand. You see this light, this, this wall plug right here? That thing has power in it. If you were never, if you came into this, let's say we picked you up in, I don't know, jungle in Asia somewhere, I don't know, African jungle, whatever. You don't know nothing about power, right? I bring you to this building, you're going to go like this. 
You don't know nothing about nothing. You've obtained a position in a building, but you don't know the building. A lot of people obtain the word, but they don't know the word. This is a big deal. If I give you all the documents that uh, they did for the budget, it's 2,000 some pages, you obtained it, but you don't know what's in it. Until you know it, it says you shall know. And that's what makes you free. Obtaining it doesn't make you free. Truth Truth in itself doesn't make you free. Knowledge of it does. Back to this right here. Came out of the jungle. I'm looking at that. I'm going, hey, see that right there? This guy's going to go, what is that? It's power. It's been here forever. Simply because you don't know how to place a demand on it does not mean it does not exist. It is currently here. Does that make sense? So as you get to know more of him, it's not something he's bringing new to you. It's a reality that's already present. So these guys still standing here. Why are you guys standing here? (laughs) Strange people. Strange. What am I saying? When you step over in this realm, pick up the image of who he is, and you bring it back to this image. So God, you, now, now you've got his eyes. He's turning to look to his bride because he's going, oh, they're looking like me now. Any man will turn to something that is beautiful and be wed with it. That's just what's going to happen. That's how we're designed. We, we capture, don't tell me about, I always love, you guys just stand there for a minute. Anyway, <laughs> so funny when people say, well, the Lord put us together. No, that's not what happened. You looked at each other and you thought, they're hot. <laughs> don't, don't be telling me about what the Lord did. It's what caught your eye first. Don't give me that scripture stuff. Oh, the Lord put it. No, he didn't. You said she's really nice. And then you challenged yourself, is this of God? Just wanted to settle that. Anyway, that being said, back to these guys. The more you pick up over here and bring over here, the closer heaven collapses to here. You guys can sit down. Thank you. How long do I get? Because some of you guys are just going, this is a little bit much here. (laughs) I'm going to try to bring this in. I'll start putting my first bow on it, okay? My first ending. I said that before. Usually I have about 37 endings. So it'll be about 2.15 before we get out of here. The presence of God is in the eternal realm. The presence of God is in the eternal realm. Take you to 1 Samuel chapter 6. They had returned with the Ark of the Covenant. You know what they did? Some people thought, hey, we're going to check this thing out. We're looking here and see what's going on. This is awesome. I want to see Aaron's rod, but I want to see the manna. I want to see, I want to see the tablets of stone. And then it says 50,000 and 70 of them died. Why? Because they looked into the presence of God, and if death is in you, guess what's going to happen? You're going to die. See, that, that I'm trying to get to you to understand the power of presence. It kills everything that it's not. It, it eliminates it. Some of you say that's a harsh reality. No, God's defending. He's not defending. He's in the effervescence of life. Therefore, anything in death that has a signature on it, you're, it's out. It's, you're done. Now, we can get into David and the presence and all that. That's, there's an approach to that that God requires by protocol. But that being said, eternity is in presence. So you have to find out the value of what your limitation is. There's things that you have in your hand, and the reason I'm, I'm just going to kind of quickly bring this to an end because I'm seeing we've got, we got enough out there already. There's just enough out there. If I can do one thing, I want to bring... You know how you muscle build, you have to lift weights, right? You've got to lift heavy things. I'd rather have something heavy, make you struggle the first five minutes and sweat the rest <laughs> because it's so heavy, than not give you anything that, than just fluff and not you know, challenge the value of what you're supposed to grow in, Right? But I also notice this also. The next coming movement of God is going to require you to not have any fractures in you. 
The reason I say it that way is because if you have a fracture in your leg, okay, you don't feel it so much when you're walking. You give them a 20-pound weight and walk with it, they feel it. A 100-pound weight, they're really going to feel it. 150, they're not going to move. Why? They're fractured. The weight always exposes fractures. The weight of God will always expose fractures. Righteousness has no fracture in it. That's why he can rest here. That was really good. Thank you. <laughs> that was really, really good. Here's what we need to do. When you really understand the value of this, you need to present your limitation to the reality of eternity. Present your limitation to the reality. Of, and listen, it's okay to say this. Your unbelief, if you have that, that's okay. Say, hey, help my unbelief. It's okay. It's okay. But at least get out of unbelief. Actually, unbelief is really wicked when you understand what, what's really going on there. And I believe that out of all this thing that I, I heard Bob say, and just kind of bringing this, let's rapidly bring it to a close. Um, for thine is the, and the, and the, to move into the forever. The end of the day, whether you like it or not, you're moving into forever. <laughs> now, you can go be an exiled king. That's cool. I'm fighting for the right to maintain myself here so I can bring the value of what's there here. Because the minute you leave here, you can't bring there. Think about it for a minute, and it's another bunny trail. If I manufacture a car that says it lasts forever, and Jesus said some stuff. I mean, he said some stuff about eternity. He'd leak like this. What if it, he lives forever? What is that to you? Like, what? Wait a minute, what would you just say? He leaked out right there. If he lives forever, what is that to you? Because the reality is there. He's not lying. He goes, that's a possibility. You guys okay? I'm heavy on the forever because I got news for you. In the presence is the forever. Most people want an anointing because it has a measure. Oof. Most people have a measure. Jesus walked without measure. I get that. But I know that most people won't stand in the, uh, the measurable part, meaning I, I, I don't give myself permission to be as he is. I don't, you know, I'm humbling myself falsely and false humility, all that stuff. The original intent, Adam, meaning the man and the woman, they were in the presence. If you're anointed, it's to her. If she's anointed, we're going to her, but it's not in the room. It's not, involved, it's not, it's not taking over the room. It's, it's in her. That's anointing. If the presence is here, everybody that walked in would be automatically freed from anything that's against it. I'm trying to make you think, man. You guys with me? Yes. You guys with me? Yes. Still seven people. Okay, how about the rest of you? Yes. Getting there? Car manufacturer didn't finish it out. Finish it out. Car says it's going to live forever. Drive the car six years, it dies. Okay? Hey, there's something wrong. It's a defect. Okay, take it back to the plant. Give you another one. It dies. Six years later, too. This manufacturer over here, let's say if it was called Toyota. They said this one runs forever. All right? Toyota is now being mocked because every product they make dies. That's a manufacturer issue. Here's what's fascinating about understanding product and manufacturing. When Toyota made a, they had a recall here, a big one here. I forget how many years ago it was. How many years ago? <laughs> How many years ago it was? The manufacturer is never concerned about the product. It's concerned about its name. I'll say it again. They know they give product in the name with their name on it. If you run it by manufacturer spec, it'll run according to what the manufacturer said. If the manufacturer makes something that is something is wrong with it. It protects its name. It doesn't protect the consumer. It protects its name. 
If you abuse those things that God has given you to do, then the, manufa- the product of you is going to deteriorate rapidly because you're outside of manufacturer spec. Anytime you're in manufacturer spec, according to the manufacturer, the manufacturer is obligated by design to back its name. Now, what's even heavier about that? Jesus says this to, is it John 17, 18? He says, go ahead and go to the Father. You don't have to use my name because he knows you. Because, see, you're not looking to use Jesus to get to him. You actually know that he knows you by name. Oh, man. All right, so let's just all stand for a minute. Let's get out of that. Some of you guys were, it was, a little, it was a little rough on you. You started going to sleep, so that's okay. A little rough, a little rough. Let's just lift our hands. So, Father, we recognize now the age and the seasons and the times that we're in. It's the men of Issachar. You could read it. They knew, they knew where they were. And now the revelation of that which is your presence is going to be made known. I ask that the value of the revelation will continue to expand. And this company of people that the glory of who you are shall be made known. That it will shame that which is on the earth right now. Because a company of people found the glory of who you are and the presence of who you are. We give you thanks for the value of the privilege it is to carry the glory of you. And the power to increase the kingdom of who and what you are in each and every one of us. Everybody agrees with that says amen.
presence of what the sound of what Barry has been able to bring it's such a privilege to be able to just flow with his spirit
lift your voice up with praise to heaven. Lord, we thank you that we can praise you. We thank you that we can come to you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you with everything that's in us, with everything that we have. We worship you, Lord. We worship you because we know you're here. You're here with us, Lord. We can come to you. You're so good. You're such a good father. You're such a good friend. You're such a good listener, Lord. I live to praise you. I live to worship you. I live to praise you. Let it go and worship him. Just breathe him in.
you, Lord. Thank you.
Just tell God how good he is. All the names that you know for him. All the love that you feel in this presence for him. Just let him know how much you love him. 
What amazing Father He is. What amazing King He is. Lord, we bow down and we worship at Your throne, Lord. We worship in the presence of Your most beautiful peace, the most beautiful grace, the most beautiful moments that we've ever felt are with You, Lord. We just love You, Lord. We love You so much. Just sing to Him. Just lift Your voice. Your song is beautiful. It's so beautiful to His ears. Yes. King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am, you're the song in our That was just such a gift, such an amazing time of worship. That was so beautiful, what everyone just did, bringing, just worshiping God in His presence. Might take us all a minute to recover.
Amen. 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 What just happened there? <laughs> That's how you do it right there. Let's cultivate until the presence comes in. He handles it from there. We just steward the atmosphere for him. Now, if this kept on going, some crazy stuff would really start to break out. I have to catch a plane here in a few hours, so I would stay. I'd have to, you guys would have to call my wife and explain why I'm still here. Thank you, Barry. Can everyone give Barry a big thank you for today and for Wednesday? And, you know, he was just coming in for the week to record. Yeah. Um, he said, can I come in and record some stuff on Kim's piano, of course, but uh, you have to stay for some of the services, too. So kind of roped him in with that. But uh, it's been just a blessing and a pleasure to have Barry here. It's always just like having him come home when he's with us. And we always appreciate you and everything you do and what you bring. And uh, I know that if you want this kind of sound, Barry just, I'm not sure if he mentioned his website, um, forerunnersound.com. But this is what he was here recording this week. It's just a soaking, amazing worship that you can just worship to. And so you can check out his site. He has a lot of content there, interviews and teachings and all the knowledge that um, he has. And Bob is going to be back on Wednesday, so he took a little break. Um, he's a little bit worn out from Disneyland yesterday. So <laughs> the Grandma and Grandpa took the kids to Disneyland, and they had a great time. And uh, this morning, he's at some of Kaylee's cheer competitions. So um, we gave him a little break, but it's not really a break for him. So he will be here Wednesday. He sends his love to everybody, and he will see you soon. And thanks, Barry, for coming and filling in for him today. Absolutely. Thank you. So, thank you. So before Barry catches his plane, let's take the offering. Uh, you can give via check or the text message that is on there. Um, we'll take care of Barry. So if you want to just give one offering to the gathering place for today. Um, if you need an envelope, just raise your hands. The ushers will come over and give it. Barry, you want to just pray over and bless this yeah. offering? So Father, we just lift up Earth's face value of who we are to Heaven's reality. The multiplicity shall come to those that produce that which is in their hand of that of what is called Earth to the heaven's reality of you. The multiplicity shall come upon them because they're a duplicate of you. So be it. Amen. And the Lord doesn't want to teach you just to multiply for yourself, but I believe that with multiplication, it's for your line. It's for your generation beyond you, for your children's children. And the same thing when you're giving the Lord teaches you to prosper. And so when he teaches you to prosper, he also teaches you, like the parable of the servant with the talent, to also multiply that prosperity he's giving you. And with that, you're going to need to have the wisdom of what to do with that. And that's everything that he teaches you. And as you teach your children, it's second nature to your children, then it's second nature to their children as they keep teaching and growing and multiplying that and sowing in the blessing that you get from God is a blessing and not a curse to your family. So it's not just for you, it's for your family beyond you. So, amen. And ushers, go ahead. Thank you guys. Um, after the ushers come by, you are dismissed. Say bye to Barry as he runs out, and we'll see you Wednesday. Thank you. <laughs>